Today, we are way behind the rest of the world in terms of our digital economy and in terms of broadband uh, infrastructure. I'm Bill Hutchison. I'm chairman of the I Waterfront Advisory Council and executive director of Intelligent Communities for Waterfront Toronto. Our networks are either one one hundredth or one one thousandth of the speed of those you can get in uh, 20 cities around the world. Tokyo, Seoul, Amsterdam, Stockholm, doesn't matter. And they're not subsidized by governments. An important study just done by Harvard ranked Canada as 22nd out of 30 of all the nations in terms of our broadband. We used to be right up at number one. So we're declining and so is our innovation index declining. I think we're number 15 now in the leading nations. So broadband is the city streets of tomorrow and uh, we really have to get out of the gravel roads and uh, get up there with the rest of the world. We're announcing our plans to build and test ultra high speed broadband networks in the United States. We plan to provide fiber to the home service with speeds up to one gigabit. It's interesting that Google has just announced they're going to invest in 10 communities of about 50,000 people each to create a gigabit per second communications and see how high speed Google works. That's a thousand times faster than we have today. So we need to be investing to create ultra broadband. Then it's difficult for the communication companies to make that investment on their own. Governments are getting involved in assisting with the investment in various ways. In Paris, they're providing uh, easy access to the sewers to string fiber all through uh, Paris in the old areas. The Australian government has just announced they're going to spend $48 billion to provide a new open access ultra broadband infrastructure right across Australia. An interesting example is in Sweden. There's a community called Vasteros that's uh, about 100 miles from Stockholm about 50,000 people. Um, almost, it's a bit like London is to Toronto, Vasteros is to Stockholm. Uh, Vasteros was finding their economy was really going downhill because Stockholm was creating uh, very advanced communications and investing heavily. Uh, so they went around, a group in the community, and went door to door and said to uh, people in the community, look, we need a very fast network. The incumbent uh, communications company won't provide it, uh, but it'll cost $4,500 per home. And they took them a while, they got it going, and now it's one of the world's most mature community networks. So different communities are going at it in different ways. I think in our case, we're very good at public-private partnerships, and I think such a thing could be created. We created the Canary Network nationally uh, 15 years ago to create a very advanced network connecting our universities. And I think we could do the same on a broader basis now. It will create all kinds of new applications. It'll help make them work. We can do diagnostics remotely. We could do diagnostics using doctors who might be in Toronto for people that are in the north. Other areas of clean technologies uh, where we can reduce the carbon footprint of our cities which contribute half the carbon dioxide to the world. Um, new kinds of uh, telework. Uh, today we like to say you can telework using computers and communications but it's not really like sitting in a meeting with other people. It will be in the future with advanced broadband. But you know, e-commerce today goes all over the world and it'll go to the best networks and the lowest cost networks. So if you don't have the best cost performance in your network, uh, it'll run around in Chicago instead of in Toronto. And, uh, and it's easier to move than it used to be in the physical days. So once again, the performance of the ultra broadband infrastructure is a real competitive issue.